Hey everyone and welcome back to The Colour Cave where we like to play with art stuff. I am keeping my voice down because I have Pip down beside me on the floor and she is just back from surgery today. Uh, she was being neutered and she's finally fallen asleep so I don't want to wake her up. Anyway, it's quite late at night. Um, the video today is for our scroller challenge from the 50th scroller box. I have been dreading this because the marker and fine liner combo doesn't really suit my art style so I decided against my better judgment as per usual to draw something that I don't normally draw um, so there was a bit of trepidation attached to this I still actually had really good fun with it so we're going to get to top down view and you can see what I have done with the supplies from the 50th scroller box for the prompt dressed to the nines let's get going Okay, so here we go. Just recently, in part of the Inktober prompts, I had a wee shot at drawing some human hands. And generally, I don't tend to draw humans. I was kind of spurred on by that. They were by no means perfect, don't get me wrong. But they weren't as bad as I thought they were going to be. And I could see the areas where I needed to do a little bit of work. So I wanted to incorporate this into the scroller challenge prompt for today. So the first thing I did before I even started drawing this, I got Mr. Gem to take a photograph of me splaying my hands out and I got him to take it over my shoulder as a reference image. Um, he's a good bit taller than me, so that kind of made sense than trying to sort of rake around the internet for, for a suitable um, reference picture. It did me next to no good, uh, the lighting wasn't great, so I'm kind of working blind here and you'll see slightly further on in the video I'm actually splaying my hands out and working from a real life reference, which apparently is what you're supposed to do. So the idea behind this was is somebody probably a little bit like myself that doesn't get dressed up very often and they are admiring their beautiful hands and their beautiful shoes. Now in this scroller box was that lovely pink sparkly pen and that was kind of the inspiration for deciding to do this because I was like how awesome would it be to have shoes that match pink sparkly nails and as some of you know I am a fan of sparkly nails as beautifully demonstrated here in this video. So just starting off here with this HB pencil and I will say that Honestly, it didn't feel much like an HB pencil to me. It felt a little bit harder than an HB. It may just be, uh, you know, the, the pencil that I'm used to, but I, I just felt that I didn't have as much manoeuvrability with it. And I do tend to use pencil quite often. So I was planning on putting a lot of detail and a lot of shading into the, the hands using the pencil but I kind of gave up on it and again you'll see that a bit further on, get ahead of myself here. So I'm very gingerly working my way around all these fingers here, trying to make them look as much like fingers as possible. And one of the things in my Inktober drawing that I, I noticed was my nail placement wasn't great. So that was something that I wanted to try and be a wee bit more careful about when I was sketching out this picture. I haven't done a lot of anatomy studies and I think it definitely shows. So I was kind of like playing about with the thumb position there and I ended up with like a big weird alien thumb so I had to erase that and, and try again. The the wee uh, Lyra eraser is great, um, really enjoyed it. Like the little plastic box that came in so I think I might add that to my arsenal. So I'm looking at this here thinking that that just looks really weird and out of place. It looks like a dislocated thumb. Uh, put in some knuckle joints, changed my mind entirely and this is really where my inexperience of drawing humans shows and I just thought okay you're, you're in pencil just go for it and, and start again and try again and at the sketching stage that's what this is all about. Uh, I very rarely draw things completely correct the first time in pencil even if it's things I'm used to drawing and it's something that I've noticed a lot of other YouTubers don't show in their videos is the fact that they maybe draw something, make a complete hash of it and erase it. They tend to edit that from their videos. So I wanted to make sure that I included that. Look at me looking at my hand, that's ridiculous. 
eyes. It's like I've never seen my own hand before. There is a huge difference between drawing something you're familiar with and drawing something that you know how to draw. And obviously I see my own hands every day and I see them even more frequently than I'd like to because I sit and edit all these videos myself. It doesn't mean I know how to draw them though. So this is actually a really good learning experience for me. This difficulty that I found was trying to get a sort of symmetry and when I looked at the picture, even at this stage, I realised that these two hands could quite easily belong to two different people and it is really difficult to get them similar, let alone identical or mirror images of each other. You know, I'm not, not going to split hairs with that one. Uh, so that's something I think that doing a hand study or, you know, any other anatomical body part study is really, really good idea to get a feel for stuff like this. And as I say, it's just something that I don't do. Um, I don't think I'll ever do it, if I'm honest. I would rather do animal anatomy studies. But anyway, that is entirely beside the point. So, yeah, the entire basis for this picture was the 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 supplies that came in the box. I have switched out the chow markers for my own Copic sketch markers because I have the colours already and the little doodle set Copic set that came in the box I'm going to be keeping for a cave miss giveaway um, so I thought it would be better just to use my own markers and save the ink in the ones that came in the scrawler box. So I was a wee bit happier with my nails here and you can see I'm sort of sitting deliberating. I just wanted to make sure that they weren't really wonky because it's one of those things that can really help your drawing even if you're you know, the, the placement of the fingers and everything isn't quite right. If you get the nails in the right position in the right place, it makes such a difference and just makes your hands look a little bit less derpy. <laughs> the other thing I couldn't decide on here was, was I actually drawing my own hands or was I just drawing a set of hands? And I had no idea what age the, of the person's hands. That doesn't make any sense. I think you can always tell someone's age reasonably well by their hands, that's what I mean. And I couldn't decide whether this was going to be an old person's hands or a very young person's hands. And that's maybe something I should have given a little bit more thought to before I started the prompt. Um, I don't know. I, I suppose it doesn't really make a difference because it's not like I've drawn an entire person. It's just hands and feet. But I think that's something that I could definitely have planned out better. I did struggle with the thickness of the fingers as well, trying to get that uniformity and also the variation between the likes of the pinky finger and the index finger, that kind of thing. It's just really difficult. It is really hard. And you want to put some creases in there so that you can denote the knuckle joints in one thing and another without making them, you know, overly wrinkly. <laughs> That's ridiculous. But I did think that right hand was, although it was a little bit on the, the chunky side, um, I have quite sort of chubby fingers. I've got very small hands but I do have quite chunky fingers and I thought that didn't look completely dissimilar to my own right hand but again I had the reference right there. The left hand uh, I didn't do quite so well with that. It is a slimmer hand um, but I, I just kind of tried my best to eyeball it. I didn't want to start measuring things or anything like that and I don't think they're horrendous but I think I could have maybe done a slightly better job if I'd taken a little bit more time of it. And truthfully, I'm not that patient with things like this. And it was just a case of, well, they both look like hands. It's, it's obvious that they're human hands. So let's just, let's just leave it at that and then we can move on. <laughs> so here I am with the pink sparkly pen. And this was by far the best fun of the entire drawing. So as I said, I wanted the nails and the shoes to match. So I have given this lady some lovely, slightly pointy, but not witchy pointy nails. Um... And the, this pen just goes down beautifully on this paper. It really does. It was spectacular. And you've got to really look at it with the naked eye. Looking at it on the camera here, it really doesn't do it justice. These pens are so freaking sparkly. And I really like them. I don't know if I would ever get any use out of them for anything else. Hence the reason I'm quite happy to, to give them away. But they're incredibly good fun. And if you like glittery, sparkly things, I would highly recommend these little pens. So here we go, this is where the sort of dressed up part comes in. I have adorned this female's hands and wrists with jewellery of all descriptions. And what I used for a reference picture here was one of these nice hand models um, that you see on websites that where you can buy like multi-packs of finger rings. And they tend to have like all of the rings 
on one hand, just so you can see the selection. So I took one of those and used them as a reference just to pick out different shapes and styles for the jewellery and try and make it as interesting as possible. So I spent a wee bit of time here just adding things in and uh, just trying to trying to use as many different shapes and jewellery types as I possibly could because I wanted it to look kind of awesome. <laughs> So yeah, that was uh, there's nothing really more to say about that really at this stage. But it was really good fun to do something like that. And even though I'm drawing human anatomy, I found doing the jewellery actually quite interesting. And it's quite a small area, so I was quite challenged by trying to get all the wee teeny weeny little, you know, details and everything in without it becoming sort of grubby and muddy because I am still working in the in the pencil. So that was quite good fun. The, I was really thankful for the brush tip on the markers for that reason because when I'm colouring in some of the jewellery I was kind of struggling a bit and if I hadn't had the brush tip on the Copics then I might have been in trouble. So I'm starting with the, the fine liner now, really sort of getting into this, get some colour into it. And I decided to use the paler marker for the background. So this would be like the, the carpet or the floor. I don't know anybody that's got a carpet that colour, but it is absolutely luscious. I will also say at this point that my marker is slightly dry. It's not running out, but had I used the one that came in the box, this background would have been much smoother with just the one layer of marker that I've done here. And you can see there are some wee bits that I kind of go back and forth over where it was just a wee bit too dry. But the, the markers go down really, really well on this paper. I think that it's a really good match for them. And uh, I, I did do the same thing, the debate about the paper in the up crate. Because of that conversation that I've been having in the comments section, I did exactly the same thing with this paper. And I used the marker on both sides to figure out which side was the correct side. Um, so that was, uh, that was, I don't know whether it was just paranoia, but I have got the correct side here and uh, I was quite happy with the way the marker was going down. I really feel that the supplies in this box were geared towards people who do a, a more sort of illustrative style or, you know, a more sort of cartoony animated type style. That is traditionally what markers are used for, which is not me. And that's why I decided to use as much pencil as I did in this picture, because at the end of the day, that is my medium. And, you know, just because it's meant to be uh, a sketching tool in the box doesn't mean you have to just use it as a sketching tool. So that was how I felt about it. So I was just trying to distribute the colours here more or less evenly across both the hands so that I could get that nice sort of balance of the different colours and the different textures of the, the supplies. So I kind of go back and forth with the pink sparkly pen, that wine coloured fine liner, which in all honesty, I wasn't that excited about. It's fine. I just thought it was a bit of a black colour. Um, I think they could have given us one in maybe a slightly different colour, but it was a really nice change from just a black fine liner. Uh, I will say that because in the scroller boxes, traditionally, we always end up with a black fine liner and some sort of relatively cheap sketching pencil. So it was a refreshing change, although I just didn't feel it was terribly exciting. So you can see that I've added in a little bit of texture to that bangle again. I just wanted to make it, you know, a little bit more interesting. And here I'm going back with my pencil and this is where I decided that I wasn't quite convinced that this was an HB pencil. Um, I could have got a lot more shading but that could also be the fact that this is marker paper, which is smooth. It's not really designed to pick up pencil. You need a bit more of a tooth on the paper. And had I thought that through beforehand, I would have realised that. So anyway, I just sort of stuck in a little bit of shading and a few details here and there. I really wanted to get something out of this pencil because I kind of feel that we neglect the pencils that come in these boxes quite often. I would actually love a scroller box just full of graphite pencils. That would be amazing. I would be my absolute element. But the only thing about that is I'd have no idea what to draw because I'd want to draw everything. Anyway, that's more or less the, the entire drawing. Um, there's not really much else to say. Um, if you haven't entered the two and a half thousand subscriber giveaway, I did a video on that on Tuesday. I shall link it in the card here and also stick it at the end card. This is your last day to enter the giveaway. So if you want to do that, you can hop over there after you've finished watching this video. Uh, it's pretty simple to enter and I have some pencils up for grabs. So the only thing that's left here is the Derwent paint pen and I really like this pen. 
it was just the right balance between being marker-esque and being like a pen. The paint flow was really, really good. I did have to shake it quite hard though to get it all to sort of mix together. But the good thing about it is it does have a clear barrel and you can see where it's sort of it's not separated but it's not all at one end of the pen so you know how much you have to shake it to get it to sit where it wants. After adding a few little sort of accents on some of the jewellery I decided that I would use it to outline the drawing just to make everything pop out and I wasn't sure how much it was going to stand out next to that sort of pale purple background but it's actually worked really really well and I didn't have to go over anything because another thought I had was quite often with likes of a Posca pen or a gel pen, you have to go over the same areas maybe once or twice to get it to really pop out. But this pen was great on one go around and I think it really added something to the picture because it is quite an odd piece that I've, that I've decided to draw here. And I thought that it finished it off quite nicely actually. So uh, I'm not disappointed with this piece of art at all. I'm not impressed with it and it's certainly not my best work but I think under the circumstances the fact that I'm using probably, I don't even want to say my least favourite mediums, I would say my least used mediums and drawing a subject that I wouldn't normally draw, I think it's turned out okay so I'm going to take this one as a win. I don't think I'll be hanging it up on a wall anywhere anytime soon but yeah I think I've done a, a reasonable job with it. <laughs> why not <laughs> anyway i would love to hear your thoughts on this and i would also like to hear what you decided to do for your prompt all that was left for me to do here is sign the bottom and that is us done for another scroller challenge so thank you very much for watching as always and we shall see you in the next video for some more fun with art stuff have a good day everyone and bye for now <laughs>